Welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Joy Zing. Joyce, the, the moment has arrived. These are our final Oscar predictions. Are, are they are they final? Final-ish. Final-ish. It's, Pretty it's much. Thursday. We have... <laughs> We're recording this on Thursday. Oscar nominations are announced on Tuesday. Yes. So uh, there's a lot of time left for us to change, but voting has closed. BAFTA has announced what their nominees are. Uh, we're kind of like the window on it, the, you know, the tea leaves have been sorted. So I feel like we're in a pretty good spot. Yeah. And, and are, Oscar voting is closed. Very, this is it. Like we're making the predictions. We're going to start just, we're going to do every category. We're going to start at the, the, the bottom of the list, but first in our hearts with the shorts. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I have not watched any of these yet. So I'm making predictions relatively blind, but based on our odds and just everything, I, once we get the nom- once the once the nominations are announced, we'll, we'll, we'll do a yeah, better job. Yeah, watch. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh, so live action short, I got When the Sun Sets, Sensor of Dreams, Fremont's Talia Vision, and The Long Goodbye. Okay, I have uh, The Criminals, La Grande Clock, The Long Goodbye, Your Dead Helen, and Television. Nice. <laughs> Uh, for for documentary short, I have three songs for Benazir, The Queen of Basketball, We Were When We Were Bullies, Terror Contagion, and Coded The Hidden Love of J.C. Leinendecker. I have that as well. And Great. three songs for Benazir, Take Over, The Queen of Basketball, and A Broken House. I don't know if I would, I'll change any of these. <laughs> Who knows? I guess we'll, I, I don't know if I'm going to change. I guess I, I could, but I'm kind of like, maybe I'll just keep all of them and see and what happens. And for animated short, I have Us Again, The Windshield Wiper. Only a child, step into the river, and Robin, Robin. Oh, okay, I have us again. The musician, Mum is pouring rain. Step into the river and affairs of the art. So, so I we, like with these. I try not to go with like the chalk five, like whatever it's in the odds, because there's always something weird, you know. But I good. can never tell what it's gonna be. <laughs> that's good, and I will say that, like you know, when when you're calculating the scores and like at the end here, when you're making picks. This is probably where you're going to separate by either the blind contenders luck from the or, pretenders. <laughs> right. I mean, by either blind luck or just whatever, like, you know, some of these are going to end up being completely wrong. And, you know, that's where you end up with a high score. But I'm just, I'm pretty much going chalk there. Maybe I'll look again right before the nominations. But like I said, haven't watched enough. So great, a, a scintillating start here. But Joyce, I've seen basically everything else. And we're going to go through the rest of the categories here. And uh, all respect to the shorts. We love, we love the shorts. But we'll go now to international feature, Joyce. My predictions are Drive My Car, which I have mm-hmm. winning, The Worst Person in the World, A Hero, The Hand of God, and Flea. Those are my five. Okay. I have Drive My Car, A Hero, Flea, The Hand of God, and Compartment Number Six, mm-hmm. which I have seen and I liked quite a lot. So no worst person in the world. I feel like that would be a snub if it, if it doesn't get in. Um, <clears throat> yes, I guess. Um, I think but also, in, in, I, I, maybe because I'm not predicting it, it's it not surprising for me if it no, is. No, that's not. fair. Yeah. I mean, I think the other, I was actually torn on whether um, Flea would get in. I, I'm wondering if Flea, Flea basically is predicted to get three nominations in, in international film, documentary, theater, and animated feature. Mm-hmm. And part of me was wondering if, like, maybe Flea gets knocked out for compartment number six. And I haven't predicted that yet, but. Oh, I'm see, if, if I were to put um worst person in i would drop compartment number six interesting Mm -hmm. compartment number six is ranked six in our odds i don't know i I could just see flea not making in all of its predicted categories i would say but i guess we'll see i have it in i'm probably not going to change it but that would not be it and drive my car i think is the the odds on bet to win here Mm -hmm. i wouldn't sleep on like hand of god or a hero but i think based on hand of god has been doing uh like low-key pretty well with like guilds and everything and, and it got again, a, a if casting at, after a nomination today. If we're looking at visibility, it's it's very, I mean, here a hero is on Amazon right now, but Hand of God has been on Netflix for months. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have probably checked it out. So that's always yeah. a it's always a positive sign. Uh for, for documentary choice. I have Summer of Soul, Flea, The Rescue, Procession, and I put Attica in as my fifth slot. Interesting. Okay. Um, I have Flea, Summer of Soul. The rescue, and I have both shuns, <laughs> procession and ascension. <laughs> so, which is probably wrong. Well, um, I could be convinced to change. <laughs> I, so we have basically the same. We have the same four, and then you have ascension. I have Attica, right? Yeah. My pick for Attica was just again. I don't know. I just feel like it's definitely like a critical favorite and like a really really good doc. And 
I don't, I just felt like that was what put it in, but I could be convinced otherwise. It, it feels like the, there's a, there's an opening here for a couple of movies to sneak in. Maybe. So the other thing is um, the past couple of years, there's been huge snubs in this category. Correct. Like, like the, the, the guild winning, like the PGA winning uh, doc does not get nominated here. And they usually don't like um, archival stuff. Right. Well, that's why I didn't put like Velvet Underground in. Um, yeah. So I'm wondering if like, like who do you think would be the, the big, like, do you think like Flea? Or like no, I mean, it, it would be Summer of Soul, I guess, yeah. based on archival, but that would be absolutely unhinged if it didn't get in, because I think most I know, but I could see it happening. That's the that thing. would like, be It's outrageous. usually like a, like a front runner like film that they snub, and like Summer of Soul fits that. That would be completely outrageous if Summer of Soul didn't get in. I, there was talk of Summer of Soul potentially being like a Dark Horse Best Picture nominee, just straight up. Uh, I don't know. I still have a winning, but I guess we'll see. I don't know. Hey, remember my octopus teacher? Yeah, no, I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, animated feature choice. I have Encanto, Luca, Mitchell's Verse the Machines, Flea, three for three for Flea for me, and then Sing 2, which has actually overperformed seemingly everywhere and is a box office hit. And I think very, very well liked. And I wonder if that'll push it over the top over Belle or Ryan the Last Dragon, which are the other two kind of like consensus. Yeah, that so last I, I had, I had those four and I have Raya I had Belle for a while that was also before it was released um mm -hmm. I usually I feel like there's usually kind of like an artsier pick and like that's also G kids but maybe Flea will just check off that box I kind of thought Flea would actually check off that box and the other yeah. ones are all just like really mainstream popular movies I have Encanto winning basically on the strength of we don't talk about Bruno uh it just seems like I just can't imagine it not winning, honestly, at this point. But I know that's I moved that to because I, I don't remember what I had in first before Bruno took off, but I just moved it into first. So, so pretty and it's like it's also a box office hit as well. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, it, it's given Disney its first uh, number one single in 29 years. <laughs> pretty wild since Aladdin, I believe. Right. Yes. Uh, crazy. Uh, for best visual effects choice, uh, I've got Dune, Spider-Man No Way Home, Godzilla vs. Kong, Shang-Chi, and Ghostbusters Afterlife. So I went, I kind of went away from the chalk here. I kind of, I went with like what I felt like were the best visual effects, so. Okay, I have Dune, Shang-Chi, Spider-Man, Godzilla vs. Kong, and No Time to Die. Wow, you put no time to die in. Yes. Uh, I, I just, so my uh, my thinking for Ghostbusters Afterlife in the fifth spot, uh, I mentioned this when we talked about the BAFTA Awards, but they, they visual effects resurrected Harold Ramis to play Egon Spangler. And I felt like that was a, uh, that's why I have it in there in the fifth spot. It's a pretty remarkable visual effects work. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I mean, we've seen it done in like Star Wars Rogue One where they did Peter Cushing like that and they kind of de-aged Carrie Fisher uh, incredibly to look like she did in A New Hope but I felt like it looked never looked better than it did in Ghostbusters Afterlife. So uh, I, I put it there. I felt like the, the consensus, if you're looking at our odds, is that like Matrix Resurrections is, is a, a lock for nomination. I think it's ranked second. Neither one of us have it in there. Uh, what was your reasoning for leaving it out? Um, I haven't seen Matrix. So okay. I'll just I, say that. But uh, I know people who have. And they were not here for they, people just like my friends like not industry people like they're not predicting the oscars but uh i guess they, they were like underwhelmed uh, I would say, by the movie overall and also by the effects i thought the movie was pretty good uh i've seen it i thought the effects were underwhelming as well uh okay. no i think i it felt very uh covid compromised because i know they shot it during covid and mm -hmm. it just felt like you could just, it was one of those movies where you could tell the spectacle wasn't like probably what it would have been if it was not during shot in me during a pandemic, which is an incredible miracle that they were able to make it at all. But uh, I just don't have it in there. I, yeah, I just which is also like, kind of crazy to think about because the first one won, it went, it like completely swept like its categories, yes. like four for four, like not, not any major categories, but you know, below the line. And I don't think like either of, the sequels, the two sequels in 2003 were nominated. I think that was still one they only had three spots in visual right. effects. Um, yeah, so I, I don't have that. And I have No Time to Die, mostly because they tend to like 
um, like grounded visual effects, like not like super like uh, uh, green screeny. You know, like the past two winners were Tenet in 1917. And right. before that was First Man, which was a complete flop everywhere else, but right. still on visual effects. And I mean, that's spacey too, but but not like superhero spacey, you know? Right, right. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that I could see it happening, I guess. It was nominated at the BAFTA Awards in visual effects. So you're not mm. way off base. I would just be somewhat surprised, but maybe not. Uh, that, that's a fun category though. I, I guess once we, once we see the nominees, we'll, we'll get to talk about whether Marvel could actually win an Oscar here. For Spider-Man. I mean, it, it had the last superhero movie to win was visual effects was Spider-Man 2. I can make the maybe case maybe Toby Maguire is the key here. Maybe I can make the case for Spider-Man No Way Home because I think a lot of the subtle effects work was really remarkable. Uh, but again, mm-hmm. with Dune, I think we've talked about they actually seemingly went into space and uh <laughs> shot into another planet and solar system. So great job adding them with those effects. It was it was remarkable. Um, for best sound choice, I have Dune, West Side Story. No Time to Die, Belfast, and Tick, Tick, Boom. Those are my five. Um, and I yeah, believe those I are the consensus. Story, no Time to Die, Tick, Tick, Boom. I have Power of the Dog. Okay. Yeah, I have Power of the Dog. So Power of the Dog instead of? Instead of you have Belfast. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that's the top six if I'm looking at our, our predicted odds. Uh, and yeah, Power of the Dog is six. So uh, we both have Tick, Tick, Boom in there. I think that is maybe a little bit of a hope diction and like we were talking about in our previous uh, episode here about the BAFTA awards, not having sound editing and sound mixing probably mm-hmm. hurts something like tick, tick, boom, because I think it would have been a lock for sound mixing. And, you know, maybe I mean, I like- think, I think the smarter thing to do for us is to drop tick, tick, boom, and you put in power of the dog and I put in Belfast. <laughs> wow. I mean, probably, but I'm going to go with my heart. I-, I felt like the tick, tick, boom stuff was really good. It um, is like the, I mean, like musicals are just made for sound mixing category. So right. it does suck that it's combined now. And um, because like, like I said in our BAFTA one, like I think West High Story would win sound mixing and sure. do win sound editing. Right. So. Uh, so we're four for five on that one. For best song choice. Oh, I've got. Here we go. <laughs> Encanto, Dos Orguitas, No Time to Die, No Time to Die, King Richard, Being Alive, or I'm sorry, Be Alive. Being Alive is from company choice. Yes. Uh, don't look up, just look up. And the harder they fall, guns go bang. So I have Wow, two, so you're going for Beyonce and Jay-Z. I'm going for Beyonce, Jay-Z. And, and, and a double kick cutty. And a double kick cutty. Wow. And I have, I have Dos Orguitas winning because it's not, we don't talk about Bruno. And <laughs> that's it, basically. I'm just like, I just think Encanto's going to win. So get Lin-Manuel Miranda and Oscar. Um, I have no time to die. Uh, Dos Urguitas, just look up. And then I have my my two, my, my bottom two here. I have Somehow You Do by Diane Warren. Okay. From I had that in for a while. And what was your other one? And then uh, Here I Am Singing My Way Home from Respect. So uh, get J. Hud another Oscar nomination. So I had both of those in there for a while. I recently took out the J. Hud one for Guns Go Bang. I just had a feeling about Guns Go Bang. I don't know. I think Jenna okay. Rodson is probably more likely, certainly uh, uh, for, for her respect song. Um, neither one of us picked uh, Van Morrison for Belfast, uh, but fingers crossed again for is, Maximum K. Does that song exist on the internet yet? Is no. it on Spotify or like know. Apple Music or any anywhere? Yeah, like a, a lyric video on YouTube even. Uh, the other song that I think could actually make a play here is Annette, So We May We Start, which uh, by that would the Sparks be great. Brothers. Really great song. A lot of people like it. It feels like the cool, the cool pick. It would maybe. be like Husevic. <laughs> and I wonder if that could get in. Um, and I guess we'll see. But I have I have the two, I have the Jay-Z and the two Kid Cutties and Beyonce and a star-studded lineup here where I think uh Lynn Manuel Miranda will win his first Oscar. I still, him. yeah, I don't know what to do about that because it's mm-hmm. like, yes, obviously they submitted the wrong song, but also the movie and the song were not out yet when they had to submit. And like we've, like you've said correctly, it's still a great song. All the, yeah. like Encanto was just all bangers all the time. It's like a Kendall, uh, Kendall Roy birthday party. And so I do think that <laughs> but, like- But no tiny Wu-Tang Clan. No tiny Wu-Tang Clan, but all bangers all the time. So yeah. I, I do think that like, it's going to win. And I think no matter what song, they could have put up any number, like truly they could have picked, obviously we don't talk about Bruno is like a historic hit. But you could have picked like three other songs in addition to Dos Orguitas or We Don't Talk About Bruno. And I still would have put it at the top because I think they're all bangers. It's great. It's great. It's great yeah, it's just interesting to see how, because I mean, I, I don't think it's indisputable that 
uh, or disputable, I should say, that uh, Bruno is a bigger hit than No Time to Die was, which is literally two years old now. Right. Um, and a song I still haven't heard in full, just those 10 seconds that you played for me. <laughs> I never want you to hear it. Ever. You know, you know, if they have like song performances this year, I think I'm just going to mute that performance so I could just go on with like Please. the rest of my life, like not hear the song in full. I love it so much. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's not like a skyfall, you know? It's not a skyfall and it's not even a writings on the wall. And then, in that year, that that year was weak. It was just like, we need to like give this award to somebody. And I've always said, if they had voted after the performances, Gaga would have won. Gaga and Diane Warren. for them Absolutely. Yeah. That was it. Brought the house down. Uh, yeah. It's just like won. no one had heard of that song. And it was from a documentary that no one had seen. I, I heard it. It was good. Uh, okay. but, anyway. but you're not a voter. <laughs> I'm not yet. Someday, maybe. Fingers crossed. Joyce, uh, best score. We love this category. I have uh, Dune, Power of the Dog. Parallel Mothers, French Dispatch, and Encanto is my five. Um, I have Power to Dog, Dune, Don't Look Up, Parallel Mothers, and Encanto. So you have Don't Look Up instead of French Dispatch. Yes. I uh, I could see Don't Look Up getting in. I would love it because we love Nicholas Bertel, mm -hmm. but I just don't feel like I don't feel like that's it. I don't know. I just feel like like that's are it for a nomination. I don't think it's enough. I think there's more passion for the other ones. And this blood score from French Dispatch is actually awesome. Um, yeah, it is. I've, I've thought about him. And I think we talked about this last year when he was up for the Midnight Sky. And <clears throat> I, I've since like realized that he is stronger when his film is a bigger player and difference, uh, like as in like a best picture player like Little Woman was, you know, right. even though that was also a very late movie. So um, French Dispatch, like it, it'll get like production design um, for sure, I think. Right. Like it should probably be winning that category. Uh, but it's, I, I don't think anyone's predicting it in Best Picture. So I feel like just like this, this same case last year with Midnight Sky, you know, like he would have been maybe a lone nominee if he had gone in. So I feel like his, his success Interesting. Uh, is like, reliant on his films visibility right. and success so maybe i should maybe this will be one i switch uh to you're you're convincing me to move him out and move our my boy nikki bertel in i do we love have, the we have to support up, so. our guy <laughs> i mean you know what i'm gonna do it i'm doing it right now i'll okay. go down and I'll i don't i don't think he's winning it. but I no he's not gonna win i'll go down with the ship though hang on we're gonna do he, it. he, he could get two nominations this year because uh, we're doing it live the song i got it in the score we haven't talked about uh would be spencer i think is a high rate another uh, johnny greenwood Another Johnny Greenwood score, um, but again, like we've talked about, not not sure the industry really is warm to that one. And I think the better or the more prominent Johnny's Greenwood score is uh, obviously Power of the Dog. Yeah. We'll Do you have? About, so I I have Power of the Dog winning. So, so I, I, know have Dune, I have Dune. Everyone has Dune winning. And we could talk about this once the nominations come out. I I could definitely make a case for Power of the Dog because mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. <laughs> and it would be great to get Johnny Greenwood an Oscar and Hans Zimmer, while he could have multiple Oscars, has won already. So not really, I mean, it was 20, I think for Lion King. So it's like many, many years ago um, at this point, but you know, who knows? Um, production design, Joyce. I've got Nightmare Alley, uh, Dune, French Dispatch, West Side Story, and The Tragedy of Macbeth. I have the same. <laughs> I think that's the chalk five. Uh, yeah, I have Nightmare Alley winning. I've had it winning since we saw it. I think it's amazing production design, though. Hard to argue with anyone in this category. They're all yeah. Like I would be fine category. with any of these five winning. And like yeah. I've said, at, like after we saw Nightmare Alley, I put it in first for production design, even though I was like, it, it's probably not getting in much like above the line. Um, right. I, I have Dune in first. For, I think I I rank this by likelihood of um, nomination, but I don't know. I don't know what I did here, but I think. Yeah, I have the same five. I think French Dispatch probably, I don't know if like it deserves is the right word, but I think that's like, it's hard to argue with it winning, even if it wins nothing else or gets no other nominations. Right. Kind I, of I, kind I, of like how in costumes, sometimes you have like a Cinderella, like that's its only nomination and it wins, you know, like you just can't argue with it. Right. Uh, we'll get to costumes in a second. First up, next up is makeup and hairstyling choice. I have the eyes of Tammy Faye, House of Gucci, Dune, West Side Story, and Cruella. 
Um, do I have the same? I think I have the same. Yeah, it's just I have Corella Dune, Tammy Faye, House of Gucci, and West Side Story. Nice. I have. Tammy I, I mean, I, I think West Side Story. If I change, I would drop that because it's the most subtle mm-hmm. makeup work. I I would drop that too, but I I uh, it's a. Uh, I just think it's gonna get in. I don't know. It's just a hunch I have. I feel like it's gonna get in. Um, but I have eyes of Tammy Faye winning. I think that is like the most makeup. Beyond the most of, makeup. I, have, I actually have Cruella, Cruella in first. <laughs> a Cruella is great makeup too, but I think eyes of Tammy Faye is in a way. Uh, for film editing, Joyce, there's always a great category kind of correlates to movies with the, at least in, historically maybe have like the biggest best picture juice, let's say. But I have- Well, Duke, it, yeah, like you needed the nomination. Um, you, you know, until it. until Birdman. Yeah, you used and, to need it. Uh, but yeah, I you do used to need it. Power of the Dog, Don't Look Up, Belfast, and Licorice Pizza. Those are my five. Okay, I have Dune, uh, West Side Story, Power of the Dog, Don't Look Up, and Belfast. But now I'm trying to get Licorice Pizza in there. <laughs> so I dropped a West Side Story for Licorice Pizza. Because I missed both Ace and BAFTA. I missed both Ace and BAFTA. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're thinking of like, I just am not convinced it's as strong of a best picture contender as maybe I had hoped or maybe we had thought. And I so, mean, it deserves the nomination for sure. Like it's such a well-edited film, but yeah. like those I have to wonder, great. I think Liquor's Pizza actually maybe is in and I have to wonder if Don't Look Up is out and West Side Story I, I feel in. like I might drop Don't Look Up. So that would be like the vulnerable Maybe let, let me do this now. Okay, I'm leaving mine. I'm leaving West Side Story out. I think that's going to be a snub. I think that's going to be one we're talking about on Oscar morning, the Oscar nomination morning, that West Side Story is snubbed and best. I know. Out. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising since it missed two big um, awards. Where it is, okay, I can't even find this, but okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. So licorice pizza. So my thinking for Liquor's Pizza, at least, and maybe you'll, you'll agree, is that it's a very strong Best Picture contender and BAFTA kind of like underlying that for is me. very much here for Liquor's Pizza. And I think that it's going to end up getting in. And I think it is, that's the reason why. And I think Dune has the edge to win here, but I could see Power of the Dog winning because I think Power of the Dog is going to have a great Oscar night when it cuts down to it. Uh, and also like Power of the Dog, that's a movie where the editing is so important in your rewatch of it as well. Correct. That, a that's a movie great, you have to watch twice. And a lot of great inserts, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, costume design, Joyce. Great list of nominees here. I love this category. Cruella, House of Gucci, Dune, West Side Story, and Nightmare Alley. I have the same. <laughs> I have Cruella winning for uh, Jenny Bevan, who did same. all the costumes. She rules. But I would be happy with, honestly, any of these people winning in this category. It's an awesome category. Mm-hmm. Love the costumes in House of Gucci. Love Dune. Again, building, you know, spacesuits, great stuff. Uh, West Side Story costumes, Paul Taswell. I interviewed him, Joyce, so obviously I have him in. It's great. I can't believe you don't even have him winning. Well, it's, there's still time. And then Nightmare <laughs> Alley I got, which I love too. Um, really great costumes. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, periods. I, I would say, like, probably in six is Cyrano. I was thinking that too, and I almost put Cyrano in, but I had a tough time moving Dropping any of these. Something. Yeah, all of these I feel like are just so good. The Cyrano yeah. costumes are incredible, um, but yeah. I but again, so. that movie is is not tough even beat. out yet, tough and uh, not sure who has seen it. Well, BAFTA saw it. I think it was nominated here, right? A BAFTA in costume. Yeah, I got a couple below the line. Yeah. Things uh, for cinematography, me. Joyce, my predictions are The Power of the Dog, Ari Wagner, uh, mm-hmm. Greg Frazier for Dune, uh, Bruno Debanel for for Tragedy Macbeth. I have Nightmare Alley, which is uh, Dan Loudson and and Giannis Kaminsky for West Side Story. I kept them in at five. I I still I have the same five. Yes, I know. Justice for the puddle shot. Uh, I I think if I had to pick one that was vulnerable, it would either be uh, Nightmare Alley or West Side Story. But I think the other three are pretty set. I think Tragedy Macbeth is in. Mm-hmm. Dune obviously has been talked about for months and power of the dog i think it's like a, a really set as well so yeah i'm i'm, I'm, I'm almost hope dicting to be honest now because like i said I, I kept it out of editing because it was snubbed by the editors uh i know because uh, it, it also got uh, west side story also got snubbed by asc and and bafta, BAFTA. So but again i mean one. i i talked about my theory about why i un- underperformed at bafta sure. i don't know it could it could overperform at the oscars i don't Maybe. know <laughs> We'll see. Uh, uh, like the cinematography is is really good. So it's incredible. I think it's so good. Um, next up, original screenplay. So now we're into the the meat of the. No offense to the below the lines there. 
or the meat the of these, these are these are the meat of the meat of the meat of the categories. We have original screenplay. I have Licorice Pizza, Belfast, Don't Look Up, Being the Ricardos, and Parallel Mothers. That's my five. Okay, so I have uh, the consensus four, and then my fifth. I still I've had this since like October. <laughs> come on, come on. I can so be that- convinced to change it. I. Like the, my, my thing is like, there's been a lone screenplay nominee for like 20 years. Right. And I don't think that's going to happen in adapted. So I think it's going to happen in original. If it continues, it doesn't have to continue, but that's just been the trend. And both writing categories are actually pretty weak. <laughs> this year. So, and Mike Mills was a, a previous lone screenplay nominee for 20th century woman. I, I um, love your thinking and I really like the movie, I but I just think, I think that the power of this category, I think Almo Dovar gets in just because he's Pedro Almo Dovar. And I think Parallel Mother is, is going to get that late push from Sony Classics and come on, come on. It's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, unfortunately for A20. I know it's so sad. And so that was I don't, but like, I don't know what, like, what do you think I should put in? Do you think I should put in Parallel Mothers? I do because I have it in, but I mean it's up or, to you. Or I mean, neither of us has King Richard. So I thought about King Richard. Obviously, it's like the consensus pick to get in here. Um, it was a WGA nominee. It made it in at BAFTA as well, I believe. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, it would it would we're basically predicting against the grain by not having it in here. I just feel like it won't match five for five. I don't think it'll match five. And for I don't five. think like screen like both screenplays will match ten for ten either. And I think if you just look at this category, you've got Paul Thomas Anderson, Kenneth Branagh, Adam McKay, previous Oscar winner, Aaron Sorkin, previous Oscar winner. And then is it going to be Zach Balin, who's a first time screenwriter, or like Pedro Almodovar, who also is an Oscar winner? I, I, I went with Pedro Almodovar because I just think that like that kind of pedigree is going to win out. What if I put in the French Dispatch? <laughs> I mean, you could. That, that was, that's been a pop, that was a popular pick earlier in the year. I know. I, just think, I don't know. I, I, I think that the four feel very set. Licorice Pizza, mm-hmm. Belfast, Don't Look Up and Being Ricardo's. And you can make a case for any number of fives, but I want to yes. parallel on others. I don't know, Joyce, up to you. I, I don't know. I just, like, I know I should just like let go of the lone screenplay thing, but then I also don't want it to happen. And then <laughs> me not predict it, you know? It's fine. Yeah, no, I, I know. But I, but I need like a replacement for it. So. But would parallel mothers be your lone? Well, I guess we'll find out when we get the best actress. I have it in for school yeah. at the very least, so. Well, yeah, me too. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, you, you, we could come back to original score, original screenplay. But okay. Let's go to adapted. Uh, my nominees for adapted are Power of the Dog, The Lost Daughter, Coda, West Side Story, and Dune. I kept, I kept my boy Tony in. Um. Yeah, I, I have, I have Tony still. I have uh, Drive My Car in lieu mm-hmm. of Dune. So I've had Drive My Car we've talked about, I felt like there's a perceived bias against Dune because it is a science fiction film. And maybe that's like weird to say, but like, I think the fact that it's an adaptation of like a very dense novel is going to help win out because I think the, the way that they're able, the way that the film is able to like condense what is a very dense novel, I think is lauded and remarkable. And I think it's a very popular novel and people have read it so they'll kind of like understand that maybe I'm overestimating it I don't know drive my car is obviously like another very strong pick here uh we didn't mention uh the Cohen uh, Joel Cohen uh Macbeth Shakespeare. <laughs> but the fact that it missed at WGA when it was eligible WGA had me knock it out so that those are my five but I could make the case for drive my car for sure Maybe we both just need to drop West Side Story and then you add Drive My Car and I add you. I'm not driving West Side Story. The script- Because rules. you talked to Tony Kushner. No, it's just the best. I think it's so good. No, it's a, it's a great script. script. And I, I read the so script. The, the, the script is online. I read, the, I read the Power of the Dog script. Also really good. Um, and You think the other words we need to mention would be Rebecca Hall for passing. I think there's a yes. lot of support for that and that nomination. And I could see her getting in. Um, but who knows? I'm gonna stick. I'm just gonna stick with my my. Yeah, I, I think is- I don't. I go back and forth on Dune, just because like I agree with all the things you said about its merits, but it's also like to me, it's still have and it, it's an incomplete movie. Correct. And I don't know how much I should weigh that against it. And it was also nominated again, like nominated WGA, nominated BAFTA, but 
maybe that doesn't mean anything in the end and it just ends up missing like King Richard might. So maybe it's the King Richard of the adapted screenplay category. Yeah. I also wonder if you're looking at anything about the movies, this is part of the reason why I like took King Richard out and maybe I'll end up taking out Dune here in a moment is that when you think about the movie, a strong best picture contender, a lot of great elements. I don't know if the script is like in the top five of the elements that you remember of it. You yeah, know, for it sure. This is definitely like one of those cases where it's it's a directorial achievement. Uh, it's it's kind of, it's it's like a, a gravity where it's like, oh, impeccable directing. Joyce, no I'm one talking about the script. You know? I'm taking it out. I'm putting drive my car in. Okay. I'm going to drive my car. It's in. <laughs> Sorry, Dune. No offense to Dune, but it's okay. It'll, it'll get like what, like ten nominations. It's still getting. I still it's haven't fine. getting so many nominations, so it doesn't matter. Uh, let's take a look here. So those are the screenplay categories. Are you going? Are you going to change original while we're in a little pause here? I don't know. I need. I. I. You need to like convince me for an alternative. <laughs> like, should I'm I saying, do Harold Harold Mars. Mars? I'm Odovar. People love him. I think that's the thing. I think that the reason I don't have Come On, Come On is I just don't think enough people saw it. I think it's not. No, I, I completely agree. I and just, that's that was so it's more of an anti come on, come on than a pro anything. It's else. an it's an anti addiction. Yeah, I just don't think enough people saw it, frankly. Uh, what if it's like a hero? <laughs> it could be. That was another popular pick, uh, Oscar Fahardi. Okay, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put Parallel Mothers in for now. <laughs> you'll change that back before the nomination. <laughs> I have I have five days. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now the the the. The acting categories, Joyce. This is the moment we've been waiting. These for. are not juried. <laughs> not juried. Uh, supporting actor. My nominees are Cody Smith McPhee for Power of the Dog, Troy Kotzer for Coda, Kieran Hines for Belfast, Bradley Cooper for Licorice Pizza, and Mike Feist for West Side Story. Wow. Um, I have Cody, Troy, Kieran, Mike, and Jesse. My- <laughs> So Jesse Plemons for Power of the Dog, yes. Hotel nominee, seemingly very likely sort of a replay of uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, maybe last year where we had- Except he's point. not a lead at all. He's not a lead. But we had Keith all. and Daniel Kaluuya in for a Best Picture nominee. Yeah, um, so I, um, I've i had this five since December. I, I presented my Jesse Plemons theory then. And still holds great theory. Yeah, yeah. and- um, you know, I, I added Mike, like right after I saw West Side Story. I have 101 odds on Mike and I feel like I cannot lose it. The only other person I have 101 odds on is Katrina Ball. Me too. <laughs> I, I added both of them like right away. Cause I think I told you when I added Mike, I was like, I just added. <laughs> I have 101 odds on. Uh, and I, I feel like I need to stick this out. And, you know, I know BAFTA is juried, but both uh, Mike and Jesse got in. That doesn't mean they'll get in at the Oscars, obviously. But, you know, it, it, it made me feel good today. Like, you know, winning my sales a little bit. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I could, I could see me just getting two people right here, which is the top two of like Cody and Troy, maybe three with Kieran. Um, I would not be surprised if Bradley got in, like he got the SAG nomination. And, you know, there's, there's other, other fringe people in the mix, like Jared Leto. And also Jamie Dornan for Belfast. You know, I'm I'm going with double power to dog instead of double Belfast. Um, and yeah, I, I I feel like I just need to ride this out now. Like I've 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 had this five for too long. I'm going down with the ship. This is this is like my my Husevic. This is like when I had Paul Bettany in first at the Emmys for six and a half months last year. Uh, so. I think we're uh, Cody Smith, if you Troy Kotzer and Kieran Hines, I think are pretty set. I think those are like the guys that are going to get in. Yeah. Like, like Kieran missed SAG, but I think he's okay. Me too. Uh, and he got in at, at BAFTA, which I mm-hmm. think was a big hurdle. He was like top two at BAFTA. Like I'm pretty sure about that. Uh, my case with Riley Cooper, why I have him in beyond the SAG nomination is that it's a big movie star performance, even though it's very short. Uh, two scenes, two and a half scenes. He absolutely dominates the movie. The movie is very well liked. He dominates the movie for seven minutes. The movie is very well liked. And I just think it's like an incredible performance from him. And I just think there's no denying that it's like one of the most important, one of the most impressive performances of the year. And also that like, there'll be a lot of enthusiasm for his performance. I think he'll get like a ton of, I think I could see it's Maybe it's polarizing, but I can see him getting a lot of like number one votes because I don't know how passionate people are That's funny are because him. I could see him 
not getting I, like I could see his supporters doing it, but I could see people being like, he's only that's a cameo. Yeah, not maybe. For us. I, I could see that, but I think I think you'll be enough support and enough enthusiasm for it. And that's also for Mike Feist. I have the same rationale. I just think the enthusiasm is going to outweigh anybody who's like, unsure I don't know who he is. Him. And right. Yeah. So I think that's why I have both of them. In. And like, right. again, I've said, like, I think he's missed everything so far because the movie was so late. They didn't set screeners at SAG, obviously, and no one knows who he is. <laughs> Correct. Uh, I think he but, gets in. I know. Like, my thing with, like, Bradley, who, like, I, I flirted with, like, after SAG, because he had no business getting in at SAG. Right. Really. But that's also, you know, a very populist body. And, um, like, I think the thing, this could just be, like, my bias, but I, I loved him in the movie, his seven minutes of fame in that movie. But, like, that character and that entire like subplot I guess you could just completely excise it from the movie and it's fine yes but I would argue the whole movie is that way you could excise a ton like of like it's, it's it's the best part of the movie it's like the most exciting part of the movie and like we've talked about this like after that sequence it it, it you know it kind of just like meanders towards the end of the movie you know right like the third act is like the energy is missing from that sequence, like the truck sequence. So he, he brings a lot of that like to the film, but that character is also so inconsequential to the, the main character, like the overarching story. It could have been played by anybody. It didn't need to be Bradley Cooper, you know? And yeah. I don't know if it was like a character actor doing this, that we'd be talking about it in the same way. And, and yeah, like the, like the end of that sequence, it's, it uh you know propels alana heim's character to like do something with her life you know but you could have still cut that entire 20 minute sequence out and just bridge it and have her still have that epiphany in a different way i guess i don't i, I just think like there are other like other uh, past nominations for short performances um like sam rockwell obviously in vice for like what nine minutes or something and um like he, he was Bush and also that was a transformative performance. So he has a, a more points with him there, but I feel like that's, you needed that character as well for Cheney. Like true. You couldn't like cut him out. And like also with like Sam Elliott, who's like, I think in a star is born for like eight minutes, but that was he's also an important character for Bradley scene. Cooper's character in that movie. Right. I, I just think he's in. And I think the fact that, Nightmare Alley is out. I mean, I would not be surprised if he makes it in. I think that helps him. That's too, just my know. my thinking. But also, <laughs> you're not predicting your boy, Ben Affleck. I had been in and I had to take him out. I just, I'd rather go down with this five than have a long shot Ben Affleck. Though, number one in my heart. And if he gets nominated, I will be like over the moon uh, for Ben Affleck. And I hope, uh, I hope he does get nominated. I mean, we, but, uh, <coughs> I'm choking. I'm getting choked up over Ben. It's, it's so um, emotional. <laughs> Uh, I, would say I, think, like, I think he's going to be like the Jared Leto little things this year. Yes, I think so yeah. too. I think that's what it feels like. And neither one uh, of us. No, no Jared, Jared Leto either for House of Gucci. Yeah, which again, I would not be surprised if he gets in, but I think, I guess my <laughs> argument for that is that it's a little polarizing, a little too polarizing. And I think there's, I'm just going like most of my picks here, especially for the actors are like, who has got the most passion, most clustered passion. I just don't think, Jared Leto's passion is going to be as high as it is for Mike Feist or Bradley Cooper among his supporters. I think the Jared, will, Jared is, will definitely be more polarizing than Bradley Cooper. Correct. So that's why I knocked him out. Uh, best supporting actress choice. Uh, pretty set here. I've had these for a while. Ariana DeBose, Kirsten Dunst, Katrina Ball, Anjanae Ellis, and Ruth Nega for passion. Same. I flirted with Kate Blanchett after SAG. Uh, for Nightmare Alley or Don't Look Up. I actually thought maybe she'd get in for Don't Look Up at BAFTA because I know that's what she was on the long list for at BAFTA. And I was like, oh, that'll be interesting. But it didn't happen. This feels like the pretty pretty set, I feel like. I don't know. Is it, can you make a case for anybody else here? Rita Moreno, I guess, or? I think I think Rita needed something to hit something. Yeah, and Dow. And she has it. Yeah, like she made, oh my God, I'm still like choking up, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm so I'm so upset over Ben's uh, uh, <laughs> impending snub um, but yeah I think Rita she she hasn't hit anything she made the BAFTA long list so I mean it would be cool if she got in like, I think there was a lot of like enthusiasm for her by uh, pundits like ourselves and people who saw West Side Story initially and then like people have been like no 
and we're going to focus on Ariana Cabos. But again, I think, I think if if the campaign had been better, maybe. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps um, so. And then I I think, you know, Anjanu Miss Sag, which is still, again, very weird to me. But I think, you know, she, she will still get in and she made BAFTA. I think she was a jury save there. Kirsten missed BAFTA. She was not a jury pick, clearly not top two either. But I think she's okay. Um, I think she's okay too. It's a great performance and people love the movie, so. Yeah, so, and then, you know, Katrina, just a, a mainstay. And Ruth, you know, she, we, I think very early on, everyone was very worried about her. Uh, but but she's been performing, like the SAG nomination was huge for her. Yeah, and again, she, yeah. like, it just feels like she's in. So those are the it's, five. It's like the reverse loving. Yes. When she was not making it anywhere and then she knocked out Amy Adams at the end. Right. Uh, for best actor, Joyce, this is, I got, I, got, I went a little, little chaotic here. I'm just going to say. Oh, God. Will Smith, Andrew Garfield, Benedict Cumberbatch, and then Leonardo DiCaprio for Don't Look Up and Javier Bardem for being the Ricardos. Wow. So you, you dumped Denzel. So I dumped Denzel and went four for five from SAG. Uh, I just don't, I'm not buying the Denzel nomination. I just don't think enough people have seen it. And I think he would be like a, name check for Denzel, but I just think there's going to be more enthusiasm for Javier Bardem, specifically for Ricardo's. We saw he got in at SAG. I think even lay people who watch the movie, like I got a text this week from one of my friends who just was like, I watch Ricardo's, wasn't impressed with Nicole Kidman, loved Javier Bardem. Out of the blue. Were, was it the same people who uh, was walking beside me after I saw the movie? No, I don't <laughs> think it was. It's just one of my friends. So I'm like, I think people watch the movie and we know that they've watched uh, being the Ricardos. It's been a strong contender. Uh, I got a PGA nomination. Amazon says it's been watched a kajillion times or whatever, uh, or Nielsen did or whatever the numbers were. I just think Harvey Bardem's very likable performance gets in. And then I think for Leo versus Denzel. I just think that Le- like you were, you were on Leo early. I, I was. totally discounted <laughs> you and just dis- to dismiss that as a possibility. And now I'm like, I think she's right. So I, have I mean, to be fair, I also know. dropped Leo in for like four weeks. You did, I've since put were, it back. You so. were first and you were like, it's hard to count him out. I think with the best picture contender, like don't look up. He clearly is like the focal point of the movie. He gets like his big Oscar scene, whether you think it's silly or not, or it's like a network ripoff. Uh, I don't know. I got him in. So those are my five. No Denzel, no Peter Dinklage, no Nicolas Cage, no uh, Joaquin Phoenix. The list goes on, but those are my five. So I have, I have Denzel and I just put Leo back in instead of Javier. Wow. Yeah. I, I think that Javier is going to get in. I just, I just got a feeling. I just think he's so likable in the movie. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know. I can see either of them getting in now. Like the, I was not expecting Leo to get that BAFTA nomination. And again, I think he was just top two there, right. um, which is crazy to think about. But also that was when voting was happening when Don't Look Up hit Netflix. So um, and like that spot is is open because we've been trying to fill it for so long and we've mm-hmm. like cycled in like, you know, Peter Dinklage and Javier, obviously, like like a bunch of people like Simon Rex, I don't think is has a shot, mm. but no. Yeah. Sad. I mean, I guess I would say like I would not be surprised if Denzel gets in and maybe again, my bias showing against Tragic Macbeth. But I just think that in the convert in the calculus of enthusiasm, I just think there's more enthusiasm for those five actors than there is for Denzel at the moment. So that was my thinking, but maybe it's wrong and he'll get in. Yeah, I, I mean, that, I mean, if Leo gets in when he hasn't really had a strong precursor run, um, like he just got the Globe nomination, which was expected as well. Uh, that like that's just the power of Leo, you know. Mm, like, gotta love he, like he he missed SAG when the cast got it. <laughs> right. Huh. All right, best actress Joyce, another. Just chaos magic go. for me. Uh, <laughs> I have Lady Gaga in first at the moment. Okay. I have Nicole Kidman, Olivia Coleman, and then perhaps recency bias due to BAFTA. I put Alana Haim and uh, Renate Reins Bay uh, in wow. the worst person in the world. You really, I really took that up. I did. I re- my thinking was just, the, again, the enthusiasm. I'm just not convinced there's a ton of enthusiasm for even comparatively for Jessica Chastain or Jennifer Hudson or Kristen Stewart. I think they all probably have the same pockets of really in- big enthusiasm, but maybe split amongst them because they're playing biopic characters. 
I think Alana Heim actually maybe is like pretty set based on just like how well Licorice Pizza performed. And I think she is edged ahead of Renee Zell, um, Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger. Z- <laughs> Renee Zellweger. Are we back she's, in 2020? <laughs> she's, she's edged ahead of Rachel Zegler, um, who I had kind of had her in the same bucket with fairly or unfairly, just because they're both like kind of newcomers. And then uh, Renata Reinve, I just think that while we could quibble with the lateness of Worst Person in the World, which has been screening since God knows when and hasn't even really come out yet, I think it comes out next week. Neon has done a great job of like slow footing that and like really got a lot of enthusiasm for the performance and the movie this last week of Oscar voting. And I think that'll help. I think if people watch it, they'll like love her. And I don't know. I think she's just like a shock nominee. That's my, if, those are my if five. Neon gets her in and not Kristen. <laughs> I mean, I think it could happen. I got her in. I know it's a complete long shot, but I'm like, I'd rather just go down with what I think are the five that they're most passionate about. And those are the five I've come up with. Um, so I have Nicole, Gaga, Olivia, Alina, who I am happy to put back in, um, and Jessica, who I can see getting snubbed, but I don't know who I would put in her place. So I'm very, very happy about Alana because I had her in for a while after seeing Licorice Pizza, and then I dropped her for, I, I guess, Penelope, and then I've, I've been like moving both of them in and out, and I, I put Penelope back in on Friday, and I've just dropped her again. <laughs> So I think Penelope Cruz could get in for sure. Um, and I just, I'm wondering, I mean, Jessica Jastain, it's weird. Like here at, at just our small sample size at Gold Derby, I feel like everyone is like, we're all very excited about that performance because she's awesome in it. And <laughs> like people who really, really do like her in the movie. But I'm just wondering if that, that passion will translate or if it's too late. And like, it's, I she, it, I could see a situation <laughs> in which she wins SAG and is not even nominated for the Oscar. Could like possibly. this could be like another, you know, uh, Idris Elba, Emily Blunt situation here. Like, like that is a very SAG friendly performance. Really is. And, and yeah, I, I don't know too. if it's an Oscar friendly <laughs> performance. Uh, there's a lot going on. The film is not strong. She's, she's really carrying that film on her back. Um, it's a great, a great performance. And there is a lot of nuance there underneath all the makeup and prosthetics. Uh, but yeah, I, and again, like you said, like, it's very biopicy. this category. We could have a lineup with five biopics. And that's kind uh, of why I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I'd uh, swerve now to have just one real bio. I mean, I know House of Gucci is also a bio. Well, like performance. Uh, people playing real people. Right. Yeah. I, I've actually now swerved to have only one because I just think they're too many. And I think they're all, you can make the case for all of them or none of them. And I don't think any of them are as passionate. There's not going to be as much passion for any of those as much as there are for like an Alana Heim in Licorice Pizza, just because it's like different. And I don't know that. And they're, they're all in movies that I don't think are really going to perform well, like no offense to respect or. Uh, well, yeah, we've been looking for the nominee from a best picture. Nominee. So that'll be Alana Heim. And actually I have spoiler. I have two, two of my five here are best picture nominees. <laughs> uh, and that, and I have Lady Gaga winning. Which I think so you, is you have unhinged. her winning because of BAFTA. I just have her winning because I think there's going to be more enthusiasm for her performance. That's it. I, I we've talked about Nicole. I've had Nicole in first for since we saw the movie, and I moved her down today for Lady Gaga just because I think it is a polarizing performance, and I just don't know if it's strong enough to win. I would be very happy if she won. I think she's great in the movie, but I just think that enough people are going to be like, mm, I don't know. It's funny because I can see that argument for both of them. Like, I, I think yeah. this race is super splintered and it's not even a situation like last year when you know we still had different winners everywhere, mm-hmm. but Francis McDormand was headlining the best picture winner. Right. Like none of these are doing that. Like none of, they're not in Power of the Dog or Belfast. No. No. <laughs> you, know, uh, I, uh, you know, I don't think Rachel Zegler is getting nominated. I, I thought she was great, but I also don't think West High Story is gonna win best picture. So no. yeah. Uh, so a wild category, I would say. Um, I know. Best director choice. I have Jane Campion, Power of the Dog. Denny Villeneuve for Dune. Paul Thomas Anderson for West Side Story. Raisuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car. And Did Julia you just say Paul Rick- Thomas Anderson for West Side Story? I'm sorry. Paul Thomas Anderson for <laughs> Liquor's Pizza. That'd be a great movie. Uh, <laughs> I want to Rasu- see that version. <laughs> Raisuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car and Julia DeCurno for Titan. 
No Spielberg. Uh, yeah, you mentioned this in our BAFTA. No like, brand, huh? Or... I got them both knocked out. I think okay. that the director's branch is uh, very uh, strange sometimes and more internationally focused than a lot of the other uh, branches. I think Hamaguchi is like very much in play for Drive My Car. And I think Dekerno, uh, I just think we, for whatever we, I feel like I underestimated the movie because it missed the international shortlist. But I think her, she's very, very well respected as a director. And I think she could get in. And I think Spielberg, it feels like this is going to be like the year, uh, well, 2012, I guess, right? When Argo, when there were a lot of snubs and Spielberg got in that year for Lincoln. But I think this year is going to be like, there are just too many of those kind of like legacy legendary directors. And I think they're going to kind of cancel each other out. And that's why I have those two in. So I think like he, like Spielberg and Brenna probably are the most vulnerable here. Um, and I, so my thought, I have uh, Jane, Denny, PTA. I still have Steven and I have Hamaguchi. So I have no, no, no Brana. This was no like Brana. even before BAFTA. Same. Um, and I wasn't <laughs> expecting Spielberg or Brana at BAFTA. So that did not affect me. But I, I, I'm wondering if I should put in Brana and drop Spielberg. Cause I don't, I like, it would, it would suck because this is one of his best movies. Like, like, top 10 easily, maybe even top five. Yeah. And it, it really like so well directed. And I don't know if it's just, again, I think there were issues with the campaign, one thing, but I don't know if like they see him as like too mainstream and like too successful. And I don't know if there's still that bias of him doing an, another version of this movie that a lot of older people like love. Like, you know, we, I mean, we were guilty of this. We call it a remake. It's not a remake of the movie. It's a, an adaptation of the musical. Right. right. <laughs> so. I, I guess the other the reason I knocked him out and I knocked, I just was like, I just think the passion, it's even, I don't know. I just don't think he's going to rate highly. I think he'll, he's like a four or five for a lot of people. And I wonder if, you know, if that, or he moves, you know what I mean? I just think that like, that's going to end up hurting him. I think the, even if you love the movie, you're probably like, like we do. I, I like, oh, Jane or like Denny for Dune. It's such like a singular vision or like, like a pizza for PTA. I don't know. I, I, I could just see him missing out. And I think, yeah, I just could see Julia DeCarno getting in for Titan. I think that's like a, a very I, I don't have spot. Julia in. I don't think they'll do, I don't know if they'll do like two like that. I mean, I guess they could. It, it, Mm, yeah I don't know I don't know if it'll be as crazy as 2012 um but I guess it could be like 2018 yeah but I don't know if like like Spielberg is obviously not Bradley Cooper because we've talked about like the actor turned director bias so I think but they've, they've too- snubbed him for big things like they snubbed him for Jaws and the color purple <laughs> and they snubbed him and yeah I mean he got in for Lincoln obviously which is big but I don't know I just think he could get snubbed here yeah I think I I think if, if there's, if I don't think it's going to be the DJ five and I think either he and Brana will miss, I would be pretty surprised if PTA missed by now. I think like pre guilds, I would say like, maybe he was vulnerable, but he made DGA, which, you know, does not like him that much really. Right. Like they love, they love Spielberg, right. but not so much PTA. And then Ligrish Pizza did really well at BAFTA. So I think he's pretty safe. Same. Um, I mean, it'd be crazy if, if it's like Denis missing. <laughs> right. Like, what if it's like miss. still that thinking, like, this is half a movie? I don't think so. I think it's like a totally lock. Um, so, I, I, and I think Jane winning here, no doubt. Yeah. To me. Uh, but we'll see in phase two. Then the nominees for best picture choice mm-hmm. I have The Power of the Dog, Belfast, West Side Story, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Coda, Don't Look Up, Tick Tick Boom. And House of Gucci. Wow. I went okay. back to House of Gucci, Joyce. I've toyed with that out. I was back on it for SAG. Now I'm back on it again. I think that it's getting in. I think that's the 10th best picture. Okay. Well, I still need a 10. So <laughs> I need so I, I guess the other contenders were here for like were like being the Ricardos. I have the I have nine of the 10 PGA nominees. The 10th was being the Ricardos, mm-hmm. which I knocked out for House of Gucci. Um, yeah, I have nine of the ten, and I still I still have Macbeth, which I've had for a while. 
So, so you can convince me to change this to something else. I just don't, this is like another original screenplay for me. <laughs> Macbeth, uh, Drive My Car, Lost Daughter. These are the movies that are like kind of pretty popular in that last slot. Um, I, my case for House of Gucci is that it's just incredibly sticky. I feel like it keeps hanging around, keeps hanging around. It's got, to quote rounders, it has alligator blood. It's not going away, it's sticking around. And I don't know, I just think it's getting, a, it got in a best British film at the Baftas. It, but not best got, picture. Not best picture, but best, they only have five nominees versus 10. It's got in its SAG. It's like done well in like, in like little crafts here and there. I think Ridley is like still an acclaimed filmmaker who people like really like and has a lot of support in the industry. He had two movies last year. Last Duel is obviously not happening. So I think a lot of his support is able to coalesce around House of Gucci. It's got that Lady Gaga performance that people like. I think it's in. I just, I just do. I think that's getting in. And I don't know. I think the other movies are too small. If you think of like Macbeth, Lost Daughter, or Drive My Car. And yeah, I don't know. That's my thinking. Yeah, I... I don't know. I like, I could see any of them getting in and it's, I, I guess like maybe you, you need to think back to, you know, the, the past, but like eight years when it wasn't a hard 10 and think about like what you think would have gotten in if it were a hard 10, especially if, if you're thinking about something like drive my car, you know, like would, would like cold war have gotten in because I got into directing. I don't think so. You know, personally. and I, I I don't know. I don't know what to put there because I have, I, I don't even know, like how confident are you in Tick, Tick, Boom? It's tough. I'm pretty confident in it, honestly. I know it missed a BAFTA and it was blanked. And I know there's like, a, we, were, we were talking on text. I was like, a, the, the big picture podcast was like blown away that Tick, Tick, Boom was included in like the PGAs, it seemed. Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I think it's in. I think the passion of Andrew's performance. People really like the movie. He's, he's carrying that movie. Like if it gets in, it's because of him. <laughs> and people love the movie. I just think it's so. Uh, people really do like it. I really, really think that. I think if anything was going to get knocked out, we've talked about it would be King Richard. Just because I don't know if the enthusiasm is there broadly. I think it's like very well respected. But I could see it not having as much enthusiasm as these other ones. I think Tick Tick Boom is in though. So I have it in, and then I have House of Gucci. I don't know. I'm going with that. I don't think Ricardo's is going to make it. While I agree that it's a very Hollywood story, I had it in there. I talked about how I was mad I moved it out after PGA, but I think it's an American story. And I think the fact that the Academy is so international now in a good way, like kind of maybe if it was like six years ago, eight years ago, I would have it in no problem, obviously a best picture nominee. But nowadays I think it's that kind of like story is not as sticky as maybe it used to be. I mean, I mean, you know, we've talked about the BAP that like Tick Tick Boom is also American, but it has like a stronger central performance. I think it's also right. more well liked. I think as a movie, yes, that's people true. really liked it. And I think being Ricardo's is like mixed reviews and some people really, really love it. And some people are like, that's not great. And I think Tick Tick Boom, everyone's like, it's good or great. And everyone loves Andrew Garfield. So I think that gives it the edge. So that's why I have it in. Yeah, even after... Ricardo's made PGA last week. I didn't put it in. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for BAFTA on this. And BAFTA didn't really help. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, like Nicole didn't get in there, which I was like, she needs to be top two for BAFTA because mm -hmm. she's not gonna be picked by the jury. And I think it's yeah, Ricardo's, it's it's like kind of weak in a way, in that I there's like no one, like you said, like no one like overwhelmingly loves it. Like it's like, it maybe engenders like some level of respect mm -hmm. or it's like, wow, like they, they actually pulled it off. Like they were not as bad as I thought they were based on those paparazzi shots from last spring right. when, you know, Nicole did not look like Lucille Ball. Um, so, and yeah, it could just be like a PGA thing. Cause they don't, even even when they had a, when the Oscars had a hard ten, like PJ and Oscars have never matched ten for ten. We so. talked about this too, and we were all like going into the PGAs, like, oh, PGA is big blockbuster, so Spider Man or No 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 Time to Die or any of these movies could get in, and then everybody was like, oh, they really didn't do any of the theatrical ones. But like we've said, like 
being the Ricardos was a massive streaming hit, it seemed. And I wonder as like the industry has moved more towards streaming, if like the broad populist pick was actually being the Ricardos and it's not going to translate over even more so than House of Gucci would have been. House of Gucci made like 150 million worldwide, but I could argue that probably more people have seen being the Ricardos than House of Gucci. So I, that was part, maybe we were like, maybe as like the industry is changing, we need to like reframe how we view the Producers Guild Awards. And then like House of Gucci is actually an old fashioned one now comparatively i don't know well i, I think it's think- also just because of like covid i think like we talked about this last week like how they gravitated towards the streaming movies as right. opposed to the money makers mm-hmm. and maybe it's because they're they everyone has a different metric of like what constitutes a box office success now in covid right because you could you could call like anything a flop because it it made like what just like 10 million or whatever or like right. 20 million like not that's comparable to pre-COVID numbers, but I'm like, that's still great. Like people are risking their lives, you know, also like pre-vaccines, like to go see a movie. <laughs> I like, I, I totally support watching, you know, like the, like HBO Max, like streaming the movies at home, like be safe, watch right. the movie at home. Like for the rest of our lives, we're revisiting our movies, the, our favorite movies at home. I don't think this is like a huge issue. Like, I don't think you should be forced to go see something in a theater, even if you like the theatrical experience of everyone cheering when Tommy McGuire and Andrew Garfield come on into No Way Home, you know? Like, um, so I think because, you know, it's so easy to call a movie a flop because it, it didn't perform up to expectations, uh, but because everyone's expectations are so different now, mm-hmm. I think maybe that's why they just kind of rejected like the, the huge money makers at pga but you know like the oscars is a completely different beast right like well, I did, that's why I, so that's why i was like oh maybe ricardo is not getting in and i just i just keep going back to the ridley factor for house of gucci i think that there's a lot of it there's a lot of warm feelings for ridley the movie's impeccable crafts i think house of gucci it's like really strong <laughs> so I just have it in. And I think it's got that at least one acting nomination for Lady Gaga. I think you could argue that she's maybe front runner now because of BAFTA. Who knows? But she's the only one who said every precursor. She's the only one who said every has a New York Film Critics Circle Award win, which is like a canary in a coal mine, maybe. I don't know. I got House of Gucci in for 10. That's my 10. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in drive my car for now. I just don't nice. know what um I'm gonna do. I'll probably change it before Tuesday, but I'm I'm, I'm dropping dropping my guy Macbeth. <laughs> R.I.P. to me. Which was really just a placeholder. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I guess I could see it coming in there and making it, but I just don't think, I think it's, I just question how many people, I don't think it's made enough noise, let's say. Drive my car? These, or no, no, Macbeth. Macbeth. I think it's just not noisy enough. I think the, you, to get in here, you got to have like absolutely slammed, like drive my car, I think could get in because it's won so many major critics awards that I think people had to pay attention to it. And I think Macbeth, maybe not you know good reviews denzel's great the movie's good but not as loud as drive my car was Mm, yeah i don't it'll be interesting if like they both got in and it's you know tick tick boom or you know king richard or something else that's snubbed like those two highbrow picks it would be wild i mean i would really hope tick tick boom gets in i just love it and i think it's good that that's all i I, I would also just like it would be cool for to tick tick boom to get in just because i don't think anyone expected it to be a big oscar player and i i i love that for films and like actors as well when you know like it's partially our fault when we just tap something as an oscar favorite or potential front runner and then it's just like a dog chasing his tail it's you know and that's how we get a lot of sweeps sometimes because it's just you know like er- everyone is like copying each other and I don't think anyone had Tick Tick Boom on their radar in like August it didn't we go to any festivals that. we talked you know? about that you know yeah. way back when and it was like I remember thinking Andrew Garfield was a legit player because like Netflix was pretty bullish on him and obviously like they were doing like the New York like I think the Kyle Buchanan New York Times profile uh, like w- was pegged to like Eyes of Tammy Faye, but also Tick, Tick, Boom. They were already doing like Tick, Tick, Boom grassroots uh, campaigning back then around Eyes of Tammy Faye. So it felt like definitely Andrew was like 
a dark horse for like the fifth spot maybe but they, obviously the, he's rack he's just ratcheted up the list and i think the movie has gone he's yeah i don't think it. anyone expected people to love his performance so much right and even then like i mean i was kind of skeptical i like i thought he could just be a lone nominee like you saw the movie first it and, was good i like we talked you know, about funny, it we talked about it but like i didn't even you know they did like a few i think i saw it at, in theaters before they even did the premiere right because it was on netflix a week before so i saw, they I had, saw it. it i think it was for shown at they did afi i think so they that's did afi november. in like november <laughs> and then it came out like in november it came out november 19th the same day as uh king, king richard. richard right so it was like they kind of like slowed it out but they've done a great job since i feel like netflix has really capitalized on the andrew garfield love yeah face. they've they've really centered it on him which is the smart thing to do because it, it it could very well still just be him getting in um at the oscars yeah. and uh but yeah it, it'll be cool just because no one was expecting it to be as successful as it is and i also wonder what its path and the narrative would have been like had it hit festivals i don't know actually i mean i wonder if it would have gotten i couldn't have I mean, right now we've got it in. I've got it in for picture and actor and sound. I feel like that's like how many would have it would have maxed out with what like four maybe for a screenplay nomination. So it's I like, don't know. Yeah, maybe like kind of have it in as much as it's going to get. But you know, yeah, but I maybe like you just be more confident in it. Maybe it would be like a six or seven in best picture instead of right. a nine or ten. You know, at yeah. the risk of getting snubbed, and maybe right. he would be even because I like will's like narrative to win came out of telluride after right. king richard screen there so what if tick tick boom had also been at telluride that people true. thought andrew garfield you know because he was it that. also took him a while to get into the top five because people are just like this is a musical and it's so manic like super like peak theater kid energy our voters really gonna go for it but everyone loves this performance it's great performance uh, Joyce, anything else here? So we have the big snubs. I think we both, neither one of us have Kristen Stewart, but I, we didn't not. even talk about her in depth. <laughs> yes. uh, Kristen, I don't, yeah. Tough beat. I don't know. Uh, but I, I, don't I, again, I feel bad. I feel bad. I just don't have her. And I just don't, I, I think because the movie is not obvious, the industry is not fallen for the movie. And I just wonder, you know, I think when you put her in the same, on the same line as the other biopic contenders. I just don't think there's going to be enough to separate her from that list. So that's why I don't have her in. But uh, I guess if she got in at this point, would you be surprised? Like on Tuesday, if they say Kristen Stewart for Spencer? No, I wouldn't be surprised, but I like she's not going to win. Um, she's not going to win. But I mean, like at this point, I think if she got nominated, everybody who worked in the movie and like every, a lot of her fans would be excited at least, right? That they. Oh, yeah, that, for sure. Yeah. So it's like it, the nomination would be the reward, even if she's not going to win. But yeah, uh, it, I mean, the the SAG snub was a big blow. And then I neither of us predicted her for BAFTA either. No. Uh, but then it just became clear within the past two weeks that the the industry is just not not here for that movie like get right. zero guild nominations and i think that's what's harshest because even when we've had you know huge snubs in recent years like amy adams for arrival or you know in directing with like bradley cooper or like ben affleck like they they were surprises like oh my god like they didn't get in but their films still did well. Ben still won an Oscar for best picture. Right. Um, like Spencer is not doing well. <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's not. I yeah. wonder if it's also a matter of just like, this is kind of what I'm going to say contradicts itself because Lady Gaga, I think is getting in. But I also wonder if when you have someone who is so famous, so like you mentioned, like all those people you mentioned are incredibly, incredibly famous. Like the actor. The actor. Like, does that end up hurting just, just, are people just not as interested in you know what I mean Kristen Stewart's like one of the most famous actors on earth everyone knows her she's been in like you know the Twilight movies alone make her like like a massive star and then she's obviously like a great tabloid presence as well does that end up like hurting her potential as a nominee in the same way like we saw like you said like Bradley Cooper and Ben as directors or mm -hmm. Amy Adams who's like a massive star I don't know I mean maybe not because like Lady Gaga is going to get in and Obviously, she's like nobody's bit more famous than Lady Gaga, I guess. So probably it doesn't work. But I do wonder if that kind of like. No, I never like understood that argument with, you know, I know a lot of people were also saying, oh, she's just 
like the Twilight actress. And I know there's still a large segment of people who still see her as that because they haven't you know, consumed her films in the past decade when she did a lot of art house stuff and has won critics awards for it as well, like big ones. Like she won more top critics prizes for her previous films that went nowhere for Oscars than she did for Spencer. Like she didn't win any of like the big three critics awards. Right. You know, she won a ton of regionals, which is like part of like Neon's like the, you know, last dish effort campaign since the SAG snub. Um, but I also think that that shows like the the disconnect like it's one thing to have the buzz and those awards and just you know tally them up like I think she has like 25 or something according to I that she had tweet I saw. yeah yeah but that's still not the industry and they're not responding to this movie right so I don't know what like you can do about it like it'll be great if she got in um just because I, I do feel bad like I can't remember the last time a front runner collapsed like this like it's a huge Collapse. I said I said Jennifer Lopez, but you don't think so. I think that was like no, because I think people were always concerned, even in the fall, mm-hmm. that like she could get snubbed <clears just throat> because of again, like similar to what you Mo were Nami. saying about the profile of her, and she's never been in contention before for an, an Oscar nomination, sure. like that, and also that movie and the type of role she was playing. You know, Justice for Hustlers. That movie rules. Oh, so God. good, absolutely awesome. You deserved. Oh, it's so good. Get Lorreen Scafaria a DGA award for for succession. For, for succession, she <laughs> should have gotten she should have gotten in for hustlers because she rules. <laughs> Too much awesome. birthday. <laughs> oh, love her, but get her in for succession. That's fine. If there's anything else here, we're wrapping up. The next time we talk, I guess will be Oscar nomination morning. I mean, we'll yeah, do our so, column on Friday, but uh, you know, video you and I talking here on. In, I don't in, know. In I I guess may, maybe I'll be changing um, my tenth spot in picture and my fifth spot in original screenplay before. I don't yes. I don't know. <laughs> Well, we'll see how it goes. It's been great. Thank you. Uh, if you're watching this, you made it this far. We appreciate the views. And on the side- there, Don't, don't, we'll don't know why, why you're still here listening to this nonsense. <laughs> but on the side, I'm sure you'll see predictions from all our other editors. And so check those out as well. Um, and, and, the, and they recommend it on YouTube, Joyce. Is that how it works? How did YouTube work? Algorithm? Yeah, it's just, you know, what, whatever you've been watching recently. Yeah. So, so just keep faves. watching all the other your ones. They're, they're probably yeah. up here. Uh, but Joyce, we'll talk, I'll talk to you on, on Tuesday. See you on time. the other side. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I can't wait. Who, who's doing the Oscar nominations? I saw a great couple of uh, really great movie stars, Leslie Jordan and Tracy Ellis Ross. Yeah, uh, you know, quite different from Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra Jonas from last yeah, year. Yeah, no White Tiger, no White Tiger promo this year. God damn it! Like that's that's when I was like White Tiger nomination, <laughs> L- lone screenplay nominee. There you go. <laughs> All right, choice. Bye. Bye.